everybody, this is another one of the retroactive episodes. Uh, we've been making references to Puppet Master 3 pretty much since the first episode. And up until the Odd Thomas episode this past week, I think we all agreed that it was the best episode that we've ever done. So it only seems right that we uh, make this a retroactive episode. So some of you guys who never listened to Reddit Horror Club will understand a lot of the, the references and origins of some of our favorite inside jokes. I sent the episode out to Scott and Adam so they could uh, re-listen to it and see if there was anything that they particularly wanted to call out being uh, favorable moments in this episode. Did you guys hear anything that we may have forgotten happened in this one? I mean, every time there were boobs on the screen, my wife looked over. <laughs> <laughs> Which became like an ongoing thing with every time any movie had boobs in it now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and also, like, now all we talk about is how much of a prick Toulon is. He's like, you know, uh, his, his dead wife's soul is, is trapped for eternity inside a puking puppet. It's terrible. I mean... Yeah, this, this we picked Haosu because it had the notes, the, like, short story notes. This one we picked because it's all about that leech woman discussion. Like, we, yeah. we were, like, offended that he would do this to his wife. Someone he supposedly loves. I'm sorry, my dear. I guess it's the best I can do for you. Yeah, it's also all about me doing a Toulon impression the whole time. But when Toulon I... as Vincent Price as um, Je- uh, Jeffrey Rush. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the other reason that I picked this one because as, actually my favorite line, uh, and I won't spoil the actual line, but uh, it's Adam has a brilliant response to discovering that I have a soundproof laundry room. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, you know, keep your ears open for that because that is probably my favorite of any of Adam's uh, quips. I just say it's no it's no two piss holes in a snowbank, but that's just me. Yeah, but that one was pre written. That one that one was predetermined in advance. This one was off the cuff. Well, this was this was the night that we had recorded three podcasts in a row. Oh, are we, and we this was number t- three. Well, no, this was number two. We didn't even talk. Yeah, we we forgot to even bring this up. So this was actually recorded the first time I ever met Scott. <laughs> uh, so, I try not to talk about that too much. So we did. <laughs> yeah. So we can tell this story real quick. Uh, so basically the original plan was that all three of us were going to meet each other for the first time and do these uh, panels for the for the St. Mort show in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And uh, because Canada sucks balls on ha- being even remotely timely on making passports happen, Adam ended up having to bow out that week. So Scott and I had to fly solo on this. And in the previous episode... We tried to record it in the same room, and you will not be hearing that episode in a retroactive episode because the sound is shit. Because there's so much echo going on the whole fucking time because we're in the same room. So the solution was that I would sit in the laundry room while Scott could lounge out on whatever chair he chose. Any other room? Matt's laundry room is some weird soundproof fucking <laughs> torture chamber. <laughs> so I love Scott. Scott drove six hours to. Sit three, in two three. separate room. Was it just three? Yeah, it was just three, three hours to no, sit. No, was it six hours? It was a six-hour drive. If it was only <laughs> a three-hour drive, I would visit you all the time. Yeah, no, no, it was six hours. Yeah, he, he, yeah, we. I drove across basically the entire state of Pennsylvania. The most just, boring state you could drive through because it's just trees all the time. I was pretty. It was. Just, I was like, man. This is a long ass drive, yeah. and then like I get there, and I'm all stoked, and not it's not awkward, that it's not awkward to hang out with Matt in real life. And then he's like, "I I can't record in the same room with you. I'm gonna go into the <laughs> soundproof laundry room where I put the dead bodies." <laughs> um, and then the the flip side of that was not only did we like power through three episodes. But this was also when my roommate and his girlfriend wanted us to go get um, get food from the diner. And we were like, yeah, no, that's cool. We're only going to record one more episode. And like three hours later, I'm like texting him at 11 p.m. And I'm like, you still want to get that food? And he's like, we fucking ate hours ago. <laughs> You're an asshole. That's it. You'd be up in 30 minutes. Uh, and then literally as if we you, – you'd imagine we'd be sick of talking to Adam via Skype. But then sure enough – we come back from Westchester and are just like, hey, Adam, let's Skype some more and just 
we'll watch Dr. Giggles and tell you what's happening on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, that's, so I got, like, sneak peeks of Dr. Giggles. <laughs> But uh, I, I think that's all we really need to say at the beginning of this episode. I hope you guys enjoy this. The episode for Monkey Shines is going to be coming out on Sunday morning. So keep an, eye, uh, keep an ear open for that. But uh, thank you for sticking with us. And just to throw this out there one more time, we are starting the next round of movies. And we are letting the people who don't usually talk on the Reddit page, but like just follow us on Facebook or, or Twitter or just listening on SoundCloud or on iTunes to submit their own movie suggestions. So send us an email at hmnpodcast at gmail.com and let us know some of the movies that you want us to watch. We've only watched one of the Puppet Master movies for this show, so all of the other ones are fair game. <laughs> Oh, we God. might yeah, Scott just Scott, dying to rewatch them. <laughs> Scott might turn down most of them, but I, oh, you know what? I take that as 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 a challenge. I will totally rewatch any Puppet Master. There you go. He's throwing the he's throwing it out there. Watch the pile of shit that is Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. If only to put the two of you guys through the same pain that I've gone We've through. We've both watched it before. We, we told you not to watch it. Don't you did. That, that didn't happen. <laughs> There's probably audio proof. <laughs> <laughs> of the Reddit Horror Club, we are discussing Puppet Master 3, as picked by Adam. Uh, I've seen this a bunch of times. I know Adam's seen this a bunch of times. I think this was Scott's first time watching it. So let's talk about it. First of all, Adam, why did you pick Puppet Master 3? Hey, wait, just one sec. (laughs) (sighs) All right, let's talk about Puppet Master. (laughs) Man, I wish I had, like, five of those right now. Well, you wish you had them when you were watching this fucking movie. (laughs) (laughs) Man, oh man. It was like, I I knew, like, we were, all three of us picking, like, weird, you know, kind of, like, funny, ridiculous movies this round. I got the real fucking bummer on this one. (laughs) I'm I'm taking the hit for this one. This This is real fucking bad. I don't know how the fuck I got a hold of this, but I had a VHS copy of Puppet Master 3 when I was nine years old, and I watched that thing into the fucking ground. Mainly the scenes with the the Nazi titties where the guy's in the tub. <laughs> dude, amazing. Oh, <laughs> those oh, those are... Dude, Megan great. Walk. Oh yeah, they're, they're awesome, but Megan decided to look over when... Only two times in this movie. One... When the guy is in the tub with the, all the chicks. Two, when the guy is getting banged by a, one of the prostitutes. And she was like, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> it's just Nazi porn. <laughs> that is my fetish. Well, we know what, we know what GIF's going in this uh, thread. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I watched the shit out of this. And, man, I was remembering this shit through rose-colored glasses because... <laughs> This was not a very good movie. Surprisingly, though, the highest rated of the Puppet Master movies. Well, so and I was going to say that I feel like I'm I'm right in the same fucking boat with you, and I think a whole bunch of other people are in the same boat with me. Because usually when you mention Puppet Master, without fail, everyone's like, oh man, part three is the best fucking one. And like, it is, but it's the best of a real bad fucking lot. Well, this reminds me of a thing that, that I I always think is interesting from my youth was like, when I was in when I was in junior high and high school, I hated trauma films, but I loved Full Moon. And then, like somewhere around college, that like switch flipped, and I was like, "Man, Full Moon movies really aren't that good." But I really like the trauma movies. Um, and I think that for whatever reason, Full Moon 
more so was making movies absolutely for the 13 year old. Like I think Charles band has always been making the movie for the 13 year old whose other older brother is renting him horror movies. Like as far back as ghoulies and, and all that other shit, like he knew exactly who his demographic was. And whereas like, yeah, Lloyd Kaufman makes like fucking cartoon versions of horror movies, but he usually has like these weird, like, He's trying to make a statement in them, so like it kind of goes over your head as a kid, but like as an adult, you're like, "Oh, this is about veganism," or like, "Oh, this is about uh, the film industry." <laughs> but like as a kid, you're just like, "These movies don't make sense, and I don't like it." Yeah, and I mean, trauma is like, if you show this, if you showed me like Terra Firmer or Toxic Avenger when I was nine, it would have been too far. Like that would have been a little too much. This this was like just the right amount of like ooh some titties and like ooh some like gore effects, but I mean I don't want to watch. This is real it. tame though. Yeah. So it, it is. is it's like so the tamest movie I think we've watched in the club. It it really is. But man, yeah. Six Shooters the fucking shit. And I think that that's why everyone loves this movie. Is Six Shooters just a cool looking puppet? Really, uh, the- my favorite puppet is Leech Woman. See, I never liked Leech Woman. Ever. I have a I have a lot of uh, sort of like problems with the idea of Leech Woman. <laughs> but yeah, this yeah. Movie, are they no, mad? Are, okay, I was gonna say this movie really bothers me when you think of the origin story of Leech Woman. Well, it's like he put well, his wait. wife's essence wait, 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 wait. I, I, I have it in my notes. I want to get to it in my notes, and we can discuss it there. But because okay. um, can we? I mean, before we, ju- I'm not gonna jump all over your notes. But I mean, he's fucking shoving leeches into his wife's mouth. Essentially, is what happened. I, I think that that's just adding insult to injury. He fuck, his wife dies, and he's like, "This is the best I can do for you." He literally <laughs> says, "This is the best I can do." For you. All right, all right, fine, whatever. I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna go to the note. All right, I'll spoil the note. All okay, right. would you want this for your wife to be some <laughs> horrible, immortal, deformed leech woman puppet? It does not she look like she's leeches. enjoying to her. Like she doesn't look like she's enjoying. Well, herself. in this movie and any other movie, it does not look like she's having fun when she has to vomit up those goddamn leeches. All right. She looks like, like she's just in constant pain <laughs> yeah. all the time. <laughs> Yeah, like, why would you do that to your fucking wife? Okay, I, I am the only one of the three of us who is married, so I can weigh in on this. I wouldn't do it! <laughs> so, so real quick, non-movie-related spoiler alert. Uh, I'm recording in the laundry room because it's soundproofed, and for a leg rest, I've opened the dryer door so I can rest my legs. Nice, man. You're living the high life over <laughs> I think the bigger question needs to be, why is his back room in the basement soundproofed? Uh, Because this fucking washing machine is loud as shit. And when my uh, aunt installed them and was putting on the door, she was like, you know what? Let's put a soundproof door in there so I don't have to listen to how goddamn loud those machines are. Yeah, when you throw a couple of hooker limbs in there, they tumble around (laughs) real bad. Dead hooker in a trunk, more like dead hooker in the dryer. Uh, That's not loud. That's not funny. Don't laugh at that. But, uh... Too late. I, uh, I still, you know what though? You had already been messaging me about how bad Puppet Master Three. Like you're like, oh god, I'm sorry. Like you were already sending me those before I sat down to rewatch it. So I think going on, going in, being like, oh no, this is going to be terrible. Um, I, I mean, it wasn't good, but I, I still had a good time. I, I still, I, I don't know. I think I just like movies that involve some type of killer doll. Like as long as I'm seeing a doll walking around on its own accord, I'm I'm going to enjoy any moment that that's happening. This is true. Well, I also watched it in the most fucked up way possible, like with different parts on different YouTube videos. That like <laughs> the sound and the audio and the visual was all <laughs> fucked up and like just terrible. So I was I was like, there was chunks of this movie that I was relying on memory to like remember what happened in this movie. I think in retrospect, though, I really, um, I, I, I think that Puppet Master 2 is probably the better of the franchise now that I've rewatched Puppet Master 3 and seen how slow and boring large chunks of the movie actually are. I really, I fast forwarded to basically anything involving boobs or dolls. Yeah. Uh, and there was probably a shit ton of fast forwarding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like the but... fake out. I remember watching this movie. Like I'm putting this movie on, and I don't have much of a memory of the film. But I see Klaus and how he's dressed, and I'm like, "Oh, he's the dude that becomes Blade." Like I was like convinced that that's who Blade was gonna be, and then I'm like, "Oh no, it was the Doctor who became Blade." 
Yeah, but think about that, too. The implication of, like, this guy that you absolutely fucking hate. You are his, like, visage for the rest of your life. Like, for you're immortal. You're an immortal doll that looks like this terrible Nazi that's responsible for your murder. What is Toulon doing to these people? This is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, oh. And then I read, like, what happens in the next movie. Oh, it goes off the fucking rails. Oh, <laughs> my God. Demon. Fucking okay. aliens and all types of shit. I have never seen that one, but I watched the trailer for it, and I was like, holy shit. You know what's even more crazy? There's two of those goddamn movies, and they I, they are fucking interchangeable. There's no need for there to be two hour-long movies. Just cut them down to fucking 90 minutes of one fucking film. <laughs> It's garbage. Oh, and then Curse of the Puppet Master is even worse. Well, I tell you what, I've seen Puppet Master 1, Puppet Master 3, and Puppet Master vs. Evil Toys with Corey Feldman. Uh, demonic Toys. Demonic sorry. Toys. Oh my god, they're coming <laughs> okay. for me now. Uh, yeah, I... I uh, okay, so Full Moon had uh, so many really, really terrible films that were just great for midnight movie fodder. Um, so, my senior year of college... I was really, really sick. I thought I was dying. Like, I, I, seriously, I, I didn't know that that much liquid could come out of my body. And I couldn't sleep. And so I just laid on my bed, like, curled up in a fetal position and watched whatever was on, like, Spike or whatever channel it was. And there was some movie about – it might have been one of the demonic toy movies – um, Tell me the it, plot, and I'll let you know because I've seen it. I don't. I honestly don't remember. I was like in and out so much that all I remember were there were there were dolls that were killing people, and and so if it I was in a warehouse, it was demonic toys. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was demonic toys. It might have been what was demonic toys versus something or other. Demonic toys versus doll man was when doll man and the chick from uh, Bad Channels joined forces in order to fight the uh, demonic toys it might have been that i mean it was it was pretty over the top but for me i'm the exact opposite of you matt where i don't love movies with killer dolls in them um i i it's just never been my thing um but i i did enjoy watching this film if not for the fact that it was just a full moon release. I, I'll, I'll watch anything. Here's, here's the one thing that I will say about full moon that makes me really sad. Like uh, I've talked before about how there's a couple documentaries I own about VHS tapes and no one ever covered this, which is that full moon was amazing with their VHS releases and the things that made their VHS tapes so good is, is nowhere on their DVDs and Blu-rays was that every full moon tape, had like a half hour thing at the end of it that they called a video magazine. And it was like behind the scenes on how they made this stuff. And then it would be like behind the scenes on upcoming films. And they would show you like a couple clips from the next movie that they were going to release. And it was this really cool, like, thing. like I used to not even care if the movie was garbage. Like if I was watching a shitty full moon movie, I'd be like, all right, but when this is over, that fucking, uh, I think it was. I think it was called the the something zone. Um, I can't remember what the fuck the name was, but it was it was awesome. It was it was the thing that I looked most forward to. And then like, you think that that stuff would be easy to just kind of throw on a special video zone? It was the video zone. Uh, <laughs> you think that that shit would be easy to just throw into the back of like the like as a special feature on the DVDs? And they didn't. So like all those cool sp- features are kind of just like gone now. <laughs> Well, they definitely had that at the end of the VHS that I had. We got to see how the whole scene with uh, Six Shooter and the like Nazi general was done in um, in that like hallway where he shot him and stuff. Yeah, and it was awesome. Like it was a cool little thing at the end of each movie. What's happening? I'm gonna, s- I'm gonna <laughs> see if it they have it like on YouTube or anything. They might. That that might be the only place that you can probably see it unless you own the VHS tape still. Um, so you've never seen Puppet Master 2? No, I've never seen 2. This is like the only... Uh, this and number 1 are the only ones I've seen. I mean, after watching this, I'm sure you're not going to be convinced to go check it out. But uh... Yeah, I'm not in a big rush or anything. <laughs> uh, Puppet Master 2 is not bad. It's the only one, I think, that has Torch, which is uh, a puppet made out of a furnace. Yeah, he's <laughs> right on the cover there. Yeah, I, I really want to watch that one. Uh, yeah, no, I, I like Puppet Master 2 a lot, actually. Um and it has kind of a, a a weird ending, 
Uh, whoa, whoa. They, okay, the puppets return. This time they hunt some paranormal researchers to take their brain fluid? Yes. That's what's going on. Yeah, so, so, here's, so here's the plot line, is like the stuff, the elixir that they use, that, that uh, he uses to bring the puppets to life, they use that to bring his dead corpse back to life, and they build a human-sized puppet of himself, and they need to get enough brain uh, fluid from everyone else in order to transfer his body and memories into the puppet body that they've built for him. Whoa, according to that's Master most... 4, oh. that's like the same shit going on, because they were making the decapitator or whatever. <laughs> Uh, it's fun though. I, I I have way more fun rewatching Puppet Master Two than I do rewatching Puppet Master Three. Wow, I might have. Re- I I'll fully admit I made the wrong call. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just, let's, let's benchmark at Happy Birthday to Me as the worst call that we've done in Horror Club, and it it doesn't even come close. <laughs> um, uh, this still does have. Puppets fight Nazis. <laughs> well, they're always fighting Nazis. Is that their thing? Is they just fight? Well, yeah, in the well, first the, one. Well, the first one they were. The first two they were. But yeah, they hate Nazis. That's what made them evil. Um, are you ready for notes? Or do we have more that we want to talk about? Well, I, this is just the other thing I don't have in my notes. In the first Puppet Master, apparently it's set in 1938. And the movie opens with Andre Toulon blowing his brains out. Yes. This, this movie opens with... Uh, Germany, Berlin, 1941. <laughs> <laughs> Which you they, think, like, just watching the movie that you made a couple years prior before putting a fucking title in the front of, like, what year nah, it is. Nah, they don't care. They, don't <laughs> they do not care. They don't expect anybody to be paying that good of attention. Nah. Like, people pe- people reference the previous film? What is this crap? Uh, yeah. they, did, they did fix it in uh, Puppet Master 2. And had his gravestone say that he died in 1941. Well, Whatever. then you just then you just go. Well, wait. Papa Master One said that he died in 1938. <laughs> Papa Master Two and Three both. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's hop into Puppet Master Three notes. All right, so it's 1941 Berlin. It's Nazi-occupied Germany. We all are speaking English to each other in German accents. <laughs> uh, we got some Nazi zombies in here. I like this opening scene quite a bit. It, when I was little, the first time I watched this, when he hops off that table, shit my fucking pants watching that. That scared the shit out of me. This time I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's <was> pretty bad. <laughs> Um, I've always kind of liked this this theme music that they have. I agree. I, yeah. I love the Puppet Master theme. They overdo it. They make the theme music sort of into the score for the movie, and I feel like that kind of overdoes it. But this, like when I first heard it again for the first time, I was like, oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Um, when you see the puppet show that Toulon is putting on, I mean, he's just he's fucking asking for it, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't shoot up Hitler every Tuesday on a matinee exactly. and not <laughs> expect some retaliation from Hitler, right? Hey, like, come on. Um, it was really surprising to see Bubbles from the Trailer Park Boys in this movie. That was the the fellow puppeteer guy. I've I've never watched. Oh, I was thinking that too. I yeah. I totally thought that I was like. Come on. He's got these huge Coke bottle glasses on. <laughs> I just love it. Um, oh, shit. I was going to open I was going to open the show by going, "Hello to you, fellow podcasters." <laughs> I was going to open the episode. <laughs> um so we went over like you guys so well, we were in agreement on our favorite puppets. Matt was six shooter. No. Scott was six shooter. No, no, you're no? you're talk you you got it backwards. Got it, okay, so Leech, Leech Woman, Woman is my favorite. And I like Six Shooter quite a bit. I'm gonna go with Pinhead. I like Pinhead. Never liked Pinhead. I, I like don't... Pinhead's kills. Uh, yeah, he has He's like the only the one that I believe that could actually kill people. Well, he looks even at that size, he he for whatever reason he looks intimidating. Yeah. It's those fingerless gloves. That's what it is. 
dude, get yourself fingerless gloves and nobody will fuck with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, if you're wearing a trench coat and fingerless gloves, then everyone will fuck with you. But <laughs> um, So uh, it's, you know, Nazi Germany. A uh, member of the Nazi party just left your building. Don't bother closing your blinds or anything when you when you bring yeah, your living. No shit. Like, come on! It's Nazi-occupied Germany. Everybody closed their fucking blinds at night. What are you doing, Toulon? You think you're special or something? Um, would anybody feel comfortable with receiving a creepy, pale doll version of themselves from their significant other as a gift? <laughs> Well, she married him. She's like, oh, it's so sweet. What else are you going to say? Yeah, I guess she's kind of into this puppet stuff. So, yeah. I guess that's kind of like her thing. I thought it was a spooky ass gift to get. I was like, get this thing out of this fucking house right now. <laughs> um, at this point uh, in my notes, I was like, why is, does everyone suddenly sound like Kermit the Frog? Turned out the YouTube version <laughs> that I had was, was not only imposing like this weird smoke effect. On the front of the screen, so that every like, so that everything looked fucked up. They were also slowing it down to like 0.75 speed. So the Here. like super dramatic scene of the movie, where Toulon's wife gets shot and killed, everybody in the whole scene was like, Toulon, no, no. <laughs> like they sounded like Kermit the Frog, and it fucking ruined the most dramatic part of the whole movie. Um. That was a pretty decent squib, though, when she gets shot. And it, like, they have some good squib work in this movie. Yeah. Uh, when when uh, the whatever general guy gets shot all those times later on, like it's just like boom, 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 boom. Really good squibs. Um, check out that Nazi tub scrub. I'm loving it. It's <laughs> <laughs> bringing back some good memories for me. Um, we should only pick movies that we jerked off to when we were kids. <laughs> I got, I got movies for miles, man. Movies, yeah. Are. Yeah. I gotta, we'll end up picking a lot of music videos, though. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, my next movie would definitely have to be um, Critters Two, which is a great film. There's lots to talk about. So, round ten. <laughs> I, I can't do this game because I, I was I, I don't have any horror movies. I'd be picking like fucking Fast Times at Ridgemont High and shit. <laughs> the horror would come in the podcast where we hear about you having jerked off to her. <laughs> But not to the pool scene. <laughs> You're jerking off at all the wrong parts. Um, when being impaled from behind in a Jeep, do not make any attempt to move forward. Do not make any attempt to yeah. move forward. This is the Nazi way. <laughs> like he just sat there and took it. And ah, I mean, ah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and Tunneler like moves slow. He's a slow moving fucking guy. Like get out of the way. What are you doing? Uh, da, 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 da. So you for a second there, you guys maybe thought that they were gonna kill an innocent doctor to get at El- Ilsa's body. Uh, nope, he's a necrophiliac. <laughs> Doctor's necrophilia. He's checking out all the dead bodies. Fucking weirdo. The next doctor, the one that they like cut his Achilles tendon, though. I guy didn't do anything. I don't know. These that guys was just so funny. I thought that was hilarious <laughs> because he like he, the guy he's getting his Achilles tendon cut. He's like, ah, ah and just like laying there taking it. And then um they just walk past him. Yeah, and Toulon's like, like, come on, my friends, and he just waltz right past the guy. Yeah, <laughs> I love your impression of Toulon. <laughs> I I don't know that that was a very I don't know what accent that was. I have no idea. Just, come, my it's friends. Positively <laughs> ghoulish. He's, come, my friends. We have more ghoulish work to do. Let's go turn my wife into a leech woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best I can do for her. <laughs> You'll get your revenge, my dear. Rob. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> Um, is your asshole ready? Good, because you're about to get puppet fucked. <laughs> Toulon is cracking one-liners through this whole movie. He's all like, you can be sure that the general will be, will be well-armed. And then he looks at Six Shooter and he's like, but so are you. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> your wife just died. You're ki- you're on a hunt to get revenge against Nazis. What are you cracking one liners for? <laughs> we had some more Nazi boobies. I'm liking that. All right. So the the shot that they had where the skinny guy came flying out of the window was really cool. But how did the general, that fat general, end up on the ground? Yeah. As I'm getting the joke that <laughs> in the in the uh shot where he comes out of the window, obvious stunt man. He weighs like a hundred pounds sopping wet. Cuts to general on the ground, weighs like two fifty. He's this huge bloated dude. <laughs> um Wow, I really like this Peter kid. He's just so insanely upbeat. Next note, Peter, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what that's in reference. <laughs> Oh, he snuck out. He snuck out to go back to, to Toulon's uh, theater. Way to go, dad guy. Obviously, it's a great idea to cut ne- deals with Nazis. I'm sure you haven't learned your lesson about them yet. I mean, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, all right, so then the Nazis start attacking, and, you know, like, Pinhead throws a brick right into one of their fucking skulls. Uh, Tunnler digs a hole right into one of their shin bones. That's fucking hardcore. Uh, leech woman dropping leeches on that guy's face doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. It's not <laughs> hey, it's, it's her revenge. <laughs> it's also funny because he um, uh, he like he just lays there. He's like ah ah, and then she's like plop right in his mouth. It That's seems, what kills you. It seems like every time that leech woman <laughs> wants to drop leeches on somebody, all the other puppets just sort of stand back. <laughs> They're like, okay. Go ahead. It's so awkward thing. because they're standing there and she's just like, ah, 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 ah. face like, is all like, <laughs> <"Good boy."> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> and then, and then, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't kill them. So you have to assume that the other puppets come in and finish the job. So but it's they just do like, it after she's left. So she doesn't feel bad. So she feels yeah. like she contributed. Yeah, like, no, Leech Woman, you got him good. You keep going to that next room. Pinhead's throwing her the thumbs up as she like walks away, and then he breaks the guy's neck. Like, all right, now we can go. Uh, I just don't feel like. Uh, here's my main beef with the with <laughs> with Puppet Master in general is I just don't feel like any of them could really kill anybody. <laughs> Maybe Tunneler. Maybe Tunneler. Well, Blade Two, Blade could as well. I no, Blade Bla- Three. Trin- Blade could poke somebody. A blade has like a scalpel for a hand. You can cut your throat. <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> what, well, six shooter too. I mean, uh, I think shooter. we're just all in agreement that Leech Woman is useless. Leech Woman is like <laughs> a, <laughs> the most useless one. <laughs> Scott's just trying to back up his pick right like, now. Like, let's let's pause for a second and think about again. He's brought his dead wife back to life as the most useless member of this ragtag group of fucking killer puppets. Hey, make her like a fucking tank or something. Make her like the, the ultimate. She's Give her like, a little bit of everything. Yeah, oh, thanks. I'm like this for all eternity. I'm fucking useless. I'm just vomiting up fucking leeches on people. Well, you know, if fucking 15th century medicine ever comes back in, I'll be real popular. I have plenty of leeches to just provide people. Hey, so I have a question. How do the how do they actually die? Is that discussed in like a, a future or a later uh, film? Um, I think in the first one, they literally throw one against the wall and it breaks, and that's it. Like they kill That's Jester. all it takes. They kill Jester by throwing him against the wall. Which you know what? I'm wrong. Leech Woman's not the most useless. Yeah, Jester's I was goddamn say Jester. useless. Jester. Jester. <laughs> but Jester has a cool effect, though. Yeah. Jester actually like. Uh, well, I, I guess have... Leech Woman's effect is so. What he one. kills them with pizzazz <laughs> 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 with tons of zazz. It's like, I love how he goes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, how about six shooter who just goes nah. Nah. Well, Pinhead at least doesn't make a fucking noise. Pinhead's like oh, I'm here. I'm here to just choke bitches. I'm ready. <laughs> Alright, anyway, we all and tell us tell us in the thread. Rank your your puppets from one through five and tell us which one's the shittiest on a scale of Jester 2, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, alright, so 
uh, the flashback where he's in like Egypt. It, you're like, oh, we're about to find out how he. Oh no, flashbacks over. It was entirely <laughs> fucking pointless. He met a dude in Egypt once. That guy told him something. What he told him, we don't know. <laughs> Doctors hate him. <laughs> find out this one secret trick for bringing puppets back to life. <laughs> All right, so Klaus, the main bad guy, becomes a puppet himself, and that part of the movie is fucking awesome. Uh, I believe, Scott, <laughs> you said the whole movie is worth it for that last kill shot. Awesome. So good. It is really good. Now, I have a question. Where the large, voluminous light source that was coming from behind his desk, I don't know where that was coming from. That wasn't there earlier in the shot, but when they start like pulling him up, from behind his desk, it's just these, like, huge amount of light to like backlight him being pulled up didn't really understand that but it still looked like a really cool visual uh visual yeah don't 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 worry about it don't worry about (laughs) how it works um and then toulon makes another joke at the end of the movie i forget what it was though but again it just seems so out of place that he you know he's trying to escape nazi germany berlin right now and he's at the train station impersonating an army off or yeah like an army officer and he cracks some like hilarious joke to this chick that it kind of seems like he's gonna pick her up yeah he's kind of like macking on her at the train station a little bit your wife is a puppet in your briefcase right now (laughs) she's listening to everything (laughs) you say she's cool with it it's okay man well what's she gonna do Yeah, honestly, you have all the time in the world to get away. (laughs) So long as one of the other puppets isn't there to clean up her fucking mess, you'll be all right. Um, All right, so I got my last, like, synopsis. So so it's all right. Maybe if this was my first watch of it again, I would have liked it better. Maybe not. I probably liked it so much because I was so young when I saw it in the first place. But uh, I definitely feel like this is the worst of the three movies that the three of us picked, and that's a bit of a bummer, but I'll take the hit this round. Uh, Matt, usually, is the one that takes that hit, so I feel like it's we got to trade up turns on this one. Um, <laughs> it was all right. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I I, think I I've learned like my lesson. I feel a better person for watching it. I always what? feel better when the Nazis get, get murdered. Yeah, goddamn Nazis. Raver Dare Chief. Geekscape Network. 